Uh, and I wanted to just start by asking how we should be preparing CS teachers uh, in, in high school. Okay, so the, the first lesson is that we shouldn't be preparing them the way that we prepare CS undergraduates. Um, the job of being a computer science teacher is a different job than being a software developer. I've been thinking about this lately in terms of the HCI first dictum. I'm sure that both of you are well aware that the very first thing you learn in HCI class is know thy users for they are not you. You cannot use yourself as a model for what the users are expecting or what the users want. You can't use your education as a CS professional or a CS uh, professor or as uh, a CS expert in any way to, to use as a model for what it is that a high school teacher needs to know. Some of what we've learned is that our very best high school teachers, the ones who recruit hundreds of students and successfully move them on to advanced placement computer science, um, the very best ones of those write almost no code ever. Instead, they read lots of code. They comment on lots of code. That's a very different set of skills than what we expect a software engineer to have. We also expect a high school computer science teacher to know a lot about what's called pedagogical content knowledge. Content knowledge is obviously about computer science. Pedagogical knowledge is things like how do you run a class and how do you write a syllabus and do using things like peer instruction. Pedagogical content knowledge is the knowledge about how to teach that. And um, there was recently a really cool uh, uh, research project um, out of uh, Harvard by Phil Sandler where he came up with a measure for pedagogical content knowledge. He took um, a bunch of science teachers and he has a test for the science knowledge that they're going to be teaching and gives it to the class at the beginning and end of the class and he gives it to the teachers twice at the beginning of the class. The first time, please answer the questions as correctly as you possibly can. Second time, please answer the questions in the way that you think will, your students will get it wrong most often. What is the most common distractor in each of these multiple choice questions? The teachers whose students made the biggest gains pre-test to post-test were the ones who got it right in both cases. They knew the content and they knew what the students would get wrong. There's a bunch of things that we now know about how students will get wrong. My daughter is in um, AP Computer Science right now and so she had a test two days ago and so I had her and her friend over on Sunday and tutored them in Java brought up Dr. Java and Barbara's Turtles and Worlds and we, we played with Java and I saw them making all of the classic misconceptions that we know about the intro Java level right so I say okay A equals B what does that tell me what's in A well what's in B nothing because I moved it into A no actually B still has its value but that's a really common misconception Knowing about things like that, if, if a teacher know, doesn't know about those sorts of misconceptions, they're sort of going to fall off the cliff because they don't know what, to, what sort of problems their students are going to have. So you want teachers to know pedagogical content knowledge. That's not just about well, how an assignment works. That's not just about how to teach your classroom. It's about what the students will get wrong, how to identify it, and how to fix it. So my first biggest, most important lesson that I've learned about teaching high school teachers is you can't teach them the way you teach CS undergraduates or the way you teach CS professionals. They're trying to learn different skills. They need additional content that we're not teaching in our normal computer science classes. 